And then we saw this guy down here too. Oop, that's the man. And we stop. And I'm going to do a quick walk through meiosis before I break it to pieces. But you get, get, you get an overall feel like a synopsis and then do it. Okay. One of the major differences between mitosis and meiosis, this thing has two divisions back to back. Mitosis, one division, and you're done. Also, this one will cut your chromosome number in half. Mitosis does not do that. The only reason to do this one is reproduction. There's no reason for this but for to reproduce a species, whether you're a horse or a dog or a cow or a human. Now, PMAT still applies. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and You still use that little catchphrase, but you do it twice. Now you're going to find out that that little phase in there between the two divisions has a little special name. It's not, it's not interface. You, you sit there. <coughs> so here's bottom line. Meiosis does two divisions. Meiosis reduces diploid to haploid. Meiosis takes one cell and from one cell produces four. That's two divisions. If you had one division, you'd have only produce two. And if you had three divisions, you produce eight. Because when you first get conceived and you're inside your mom and you're growing, it goes 2 to 4 to 8 to 16, and they divide, and you keep on doubling your number to finally get to be a mass, and you can see inside that the lady's pregnant. All right? Now, meiosis is not about creating another cell like the one you had first. It's all about making a gamete, sperm or egg. Okay? So it's all about reproduction. Then, um, I probably want to take that off. I was thinking about using, you know, we, have, we call it myosis 1 and myosis 2. So this should be like PMAT 1. I am going to take that off. I don't think that is appropriate to say 1 right there. Roman numeral 1. I want to take it off right there too. They won't change your blank because you still. Okay, two P mats in a row. They're called meiosis one, meiosis two. But still, it's just only two. Prophase, metaphase, and metaphase. Prophase, metaphase, and then you're done. When it's, and this is that word. Inter means between. So, in that short span between meiosis one and meiosis two, the cell enters interkinesis not interface. It's, it's, the, it's the go between. Very, very short. There's no duplication of uh, if you duplicate it again, you wouldn't reduce the number of half. I can't reduce it again. I want I want to have what I have. So if if the start off cell, if the diploid number is four, when you cut it in half, it's going to be two. And that way when that egg with two joins the sperm with two, you're right back to four, which is what the mom and dad have. And that's why this thing works. But do you look like your brother or your sister? I mean, you're not all... Now, I've seen some sisters who look so much alike that they're twins. But I've seen some sisters who you go, I can't believe y'all are kin. You look so different. Like, well, is one adopted? No, we're, we're both blood, but... I got genes from mama, more of my share, and you got genes from daddy, and you can look at me and see my daddy's side of the family. You look at her and see mama's side, and we're both blood sisters. Meiosis makes that happen because there's a shuffling of chromosomes in meiosis. It's called crossing over. Everything does. Everything does. You have a litter of eight puppies. They're all different. They might look alike. And as they grow older, you see them grow different. Well, even twins do that. As, ten, as twins grow older, you start to see those subtle differences. A mole, maybe a scar from playing as a child. Okay? But the thing about it is, though, that gamete had better be half. It will not work. It will not work. And species, like a German Shepherd, 
and a collie are not different species. You know why? Because they can make kids. If two animals can mate and make kids, we cannot call them different species. Because species differences means this this dolphin can't mate with a shark. Oh, they can mate. But nothing would happen to them. But if, if the mating does produce offspring, then you get, that's one species. Now, the polar bear can mate with a black bear, mm -hmm. but they don't. You know why? Uh, How about distances? Will the polar bear ever even find a brown bear to, to mate with? Maybe a Kodiak. <laughs> maybe a Kodiak, but take, let's talk about a grizzly bear here in North America. Yeah. Polar bear has his own species, even though those two can make a kid. But because of the way nature has them isolated, there's no chance a polar bear ever even coming across a, a, a grizzly bear, except in a zoo. But the zoos aren't fishing. So we still maintain the different Ursus. Ursus is a genus. And the one for the, for the grizzly is Ursus horribilis. Horrible. Terrible bear. You know grizzly bear is known for just tear you up. But a brown bear is probably worse. I know it's bigger. But I say brown bear. Brown don't sound so bad like a grizzly bear. But the Kodiak bear, he could not stand up in here. If he stood up, he'd bump his head. That's how big that sucker is. And a grizzly probably could eat it. But, but, but a Kodiak bear is the biggest carnivore that walks the face of the earth. And the folks who hunt them, they got some guts. Got to hurt that bear, he don't run off. He takes the fight to you then, and they have to fight. Um, so, how about um, when they make a mule? That's two. Well, what 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 two things make a mule? A horse and a donkey. Okay, horses and horses and horses can make more horses. Donkey, donkey, donkey. That makes more donkeys. When you cross those two, you get a meal which is sterile. And what you have is something as large as a horse, but as sure-footed as a donkey. Mm -hmm. i tell you what, the mules bring a nice chunk of change. Because mules are they're just such hard workers. Um, I know from, from my granddaddy, he really have a little mule pull that plow than a horse any day of the week. Now, I know there are two divisions, but it gets the job done in the first division. The job is cut the chromosome in half. It's, all, it's about the chromosomes. So I reckon nature figures, let's get it done soon, don't wait. So the first division actually reduces chromosome number to half. And the second division just divides them up. So when you enter the first division, you have your 46 chromosomes. And when that division's over, you now have, well, actually you have 92. Then you have 46. And then that division has 46. The first division of mitosis is like the first division of mitosis. Uh, of mitosis is like mitosis. i got to have half before I can have those again. I'll show you a picture later on. Now, we still get chromatids. And homologous means... I have a pair of chromosomes. I, one came from mom and one came from dad. I got 23 pairs. And every one of them, one from mama, one from dad. But the pair, like, if this is pair, if this is pair number one and pair number two, well, well this one of two won't ever get with that one. They, they, they're going to they're gonna line up with their own mate. If you, have, if you have Nike tennis shoes and you have Adidas, uh, when you get the pairing going on, the two Nikes find each other. The, um, the flip flops find each other. You won't have a flip flop pairing because on those two, one might code for your hair color, and this thing might code for if you make saliva or not. So homologous means two of the same kind. So one from mama, one from dad. And they find each other. And that's still above how they find in all that mess. How do I find my partner if I can't, if I'm this chromosome 
and I could, and I code for hair color and and how tall you are. Well, there's one for mama do the same thing. I gotta find that bad that that woman. When I find, I line back up. Those two are your homologous chromosome, and they always do that. Okay, so homologous means of the pair, one from mama, one from dad, and you don't mix the shoes up. You make sure that they are lined up. And there's some, there are a number of things on 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 the internet that show you pictures. I think I got one or not. Um, so I'm telling you. Your state of ploidy, ploidy is like being diploid or haploid. So if you're a, if you have four and that's your diploid number, then that's all you're going to have is a max. So if you're going to have meiosis, then four becomes two after the first division. The first division doesn't. The second division just keeps on dividing. And I'll tell you more about that later on. Now, you have sexual reproduction. You have asexual reproduction. If you take a starfish and cut one arm off and throw it back in the water, you're making you starfish. Was that sexual or asexual? Asexual. That's the asexual. Now, if two starfish get together and they, they swap sperm and eggs, and then they make these, that's sexual. We don't do asexual. Trees can though. You can take you can take a, a piece of a branch and stick in the ground. That's over a set root. You can have two trees in. That's asexual. Now, I'm gonna slow it down. And like I'm telling you, don't be surprised if what you're seeing is a lot like mitosis. Because they are very similar, except for meiosis is two divisions. Okay? So here we go. Just like the other prophase, the chromatin becomes visible and I can see it. That's the same as prophase for um, mitosis. The spindle fiber starts to form just like in mitosis. The, the centrosomes go apart just like mitosis. As a matter of fact, you couldn't tell if this is mitosis or the first phase of meiosis from looking at the first go. Now, that thing divides again, you go, oh, now that's meiosis. If it never divides again, then that's mitosis. But if those cells divide again, and those two, they eat, and then you got four, that's when you know that, oh, I'm looking at mitosis here, at meiosis. Now, centromere is still there. That's what hooks them together. Centromere holds them together. Um, really, it's four in. I mean by this. If, if this one divides, I have two, right? If he divides, I have two also, right? And they stick together. One, two, three, four. That's four in. That is, that is, can I do that first though so you can have them later on. So there's in, there's two in, and there's four in. And when you have 96 chromosomes, that's four in. When you have, when you have, I mean, 92. When you have 46 chromosomes, that's two in. When you have half of that, you have n. I know I've never seen an eight in or higher than that. Okay, and even and even mitosis does that. Because you got to double them to become four in before you separate them and go right back to two in, and then the cell is like the one ahead. But this thing here, meiosis, you first produce four in, and you make two in. And then you do divide again. And it's the first division that when you get done that first division, you're at your one in already. I'm going to show some pictures of crossing over. A crossing over is why we don't look like our brother, and why you might like your brother, and why two people who are not real twins kind of look so much alike. I know when I was teaching in high school, we had the family called the, their drivers. Nancy Driver, Kathy Driver, and they can't, and I had, I, had, I taught all of your nice folks, and I saw the next driver, I could, is Nancy your sister? Because they looked just alike. They were one year apart. And I saw another driver, I said, I bet you in them drivers, ain't you? And he goes, yeah, I look like them all. We all look alike. I don't know why, but they do. All right? 
Um, crossing over happens, and I'll show you pictures so I can the pictures better than that. But when you cross over and you exchange legs and separate, then on this chromosome, I got some of the mama and some for daddy on one chromosome. That makes for diversity. So you don't look like your sister or your brother or your mama or your dad. This is a picture I have. Okay, this is from daddy and that's from mama. Okay, let's say this one might control hair color and that controls hair color. And I know brown is dominant, right? So if this if this has a small B and that has a small B, well you, you won't be brown weed. You might be blind. So half of every trait comes from one parent and half from the other. You know sickle cell? That's where you have two recessive genes. If 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 this gene is a large yes, which means you're healthy, and that gene's a small yes, and that's in one person, they will not have sickle cell because this one's going to stop it. So if if these two were in mama, and this was a big S, and that's a small S, then mama will not have, but she will also not ever get malaria. Folks with the trait never get malaria. Now if this is a big S, another big S, they will not get sickle cell, and they could get malaria. But if you have two of the, of the small S's, then they will get malaria. Sickle cell too. <coughs> so inside there, most times these things are nowhere near each other doing their thing. But before you have any division, they must find each other and get together. I don't understand how they find each other. It might be like, like me just walking across the country trying to find someone that I'm supposed to know. But you see that one? He's right there. This is still one chromosome. That's still one chromosome. It just, he just have to sit. And see that one? This is one chromosome. Now, if these hook together, do you not see one, two, three, four in? If they all separate, you have four separate chromosomes. Now remember now, there's two in every cell we have. But when you make sperm, he goes in one sperm, he goes in a sperm, that goes in a sperm, that goes in a sperm. So every sperm only has one of those. And on the mama side, one egg gets, you're going to make four eggs. One gets this one, one gets that one, one gets that one. So that if, if my sperm with this one in it finds my wife's egg with that one, we're back, we're back looking at this one. But when they come across each other, these sides will swap. And you're going to find this becomes that dark red. That becomes that light color, and then they separate so that I have variety. So I won't look like my mama. This is crossing over. They really all hook together. This is your tetrad. Tetra means four, right? So once they connect, it's combat. Yeah, they're, 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 they're going to be connected here eventually. And they do become connected. And all four of these now are one single thing called a tetrad, which is 4N. Now, right here, they swap. You give me half of your leg, and when they separate, they look like that. If you look up here, these four now, this is still like that one, but the middle ones, if you get this one, you're going to have traits from mama and daddy on one chromosome. And they cross over more than one time too. And that guarantees that every time a child is born, it does not look like his siblings. If it does, it's purely a manifestation accident. That crossing over, and right here is the chiasma. Right there where they make the cross. And it's separate and, and things, that's called the chiasma, C-H-I-A-S-M-A, -S -S it's in your notes. Now, here's what's going to happen at the very best. One sperm might get this one. One sperm might get that one. Sperm might get, it might get that one. Now, on the mama's side, I do the same thing. 
So that I have a lot. If this one and a, and a ch ch child joins that one, that child looks nothing like his parents. After you think the postman came by. Uh-uh. That's just genetics. The postman yeah. wasn't there at all. Alright. Now this is a variety of pictures. This is the real deal. And we can always draw it prettier. Because we can make it visible to you. But the tetrads, there's your tet there. now see how they're linked together? They're hooked together because that's where they crossed over. When they separate, this blue come in that green. And that green come in that blue. This just shows the, the centrioles separating. Just like prophase and metaphase, it's the same thing happening here. But you have tetrads. And here, of course, I can see chromosomes. I can't see them this good, but I do see them. So I know I'm in prophase. Also, notice there's no nuclear membrane. And here it's breaking down. Um, here it's breaking down. Who drew this one should have drawn little blakes in there. Now I might one day go back my step and fix it so that I show a membrane that's not intact, but actually it dissolved. Because if that membrane is there, these can't grab those chromosomes because this is going to be like a glass pane. Like it's got to be gone so the hook on happens. And here, it's gone. This is how it's Now, in metaphase, they're going to line up like they did in the metaphase of, of meiosis, of mitosis. You still got a grand total of the tetrads. You have, you have four chromatids. That's two chromosomes. And, down, and the kinetochores, they still hook onto those things. So many turns on meiosis, there's also a mitosis. That's why they might test meiosis on that first, and then my, that doesn't make any sense. So keep it together, you work together. All right, this is a picture. Now, there's the plane. There's the plane. There's the plane. There's the real plane. No doubt. They're on, now, I, I can't see that they're four hook right there. But I do know that right there is one set of four. And right there is where they're connected. You see right here? That's a set of four. I can't see crossing over here. Um, crossing over, just the very tips have crossed over on this one. But they are down the center. <coughs> And they look like double X's. Double X's. Because each leg of the X will one day become a chromosome again. But that's still in the first division. Now, <coughs> anaphase, they're pulled apart. Just like in mitosis, they're pulled apart. And everything written there is not, I'm showing you my picture of what I'm going to mean. Um, the two X's separate. Now, let me look ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you what's going on here. <clears throat> I'm going to go back in the very beginning. Okay. One, two, three, four. Do you see four X's there? All right. H1 came from a chromosome, right? So every X you see is one chromosome that made a copy of the set, right? I see four X's. How many chromosomes made those four X's? Four. Because one chromosome made one X, another made the another X, another made a third. So as I look at these, I see one, two, three, four. I see now. When I pull these apart and I divide in half, I'm down to one chromosome. Because the X equals one. Now watch this. When they are pulled apart, when they're and they're starting, as you see starting to, to um, cytokinase. And you see how the you see a bit of blue right there? See a bit of green right there? When they separate, 
the crossing over separates and that makes it out. How many chromosomes, if you count the extra one chromosome, how many chromosomes does this half have in all? If one X is one chromosome. Two. Two. You've just halved your number, haven't you? Okay. All, all, all together, how many chromosomes do you really have? Four. 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 I, I, there, there are eight chromatids, but there are four chromosomes. Because each one makes a copy, right? Now, if this thing divides down through here, oh, we have two of these things per cell, or I used to have four of them per cell. So if I have four here, that's four chromosomes looking like the X. Now, when these get pulled apart and I divide, this cell don't have four anymore, does he? He only has how many? Two. And you just reduce your number from diploid to haploid. Now watch left, and then pull those suckers apart. And put one of these in one sperm, and one in another sperm, and one in another one. Now, I don't make a, I'm making a copy now. I don't make a copy. I'm going to divide these now. Because when this divides, you then can say, I have two chromosomes again. As long as they hook together, that's one chromosome. Two chromatids. So the moment, that, the moment this thing comes apart, snap, and those chromatids, and we call chromosomes. Now, you see the V's? They got the V formation. Those are the V's you see. They still form the little V's. And I told you earlier, anaphase, that V look, that, that's a major giveaway. Major giveaway. On these, what I'm seeing is they're being moved from the center. These are moved. Now the question is, how do I know that that's not prophase and they're being shoved to the center to do metaphase later? I don't know that. Because these, these things here are at their very maximum parts. Prophase, they're moving there. And when they're there, you pass prophase. You pass metaphase. So in prophase, if you look at them, they're moving. These aren't moving yet. They're moving. And they're going to start tugging. So the question would be, how do you know this is actually anaphase? I see no V's in there as opposed to maybe prophase. Because you could, you could argue that, well, these things are shoving these toward the center. Because if you prophase, that's what's happening, right? But if you didn't bend the center, then you're going to be separated, right? And I tell you right now, if this were prophase, these two centrioles would not be as far apart as they are. They're that far apart, I know. I'm even past metaphase. Now if I see this in real life in the V's, case closed. And right here I know that this thing is anaphase because I see this thing starting to pinch. A lot of times, I'll tell you that yeah, I'll tell you yesterday that sometimes the pinching starts during anaphase. You know, it doesn't wait till the phase, it starts. Once they're out of here, we can start pinching. But the point is, this brand new cell will have only two chromosomes where the one that produced them had four. This is two in, and when I get done, he'll be, he'll be one in, and then if I divide them again, I'll have just two more one in. I'll try to work. Now, what is that called in the middle? The What's what? What is it called? Do you remember what my grandson's is? I mean right here? Yeah. Cleavage furrow. It's a cleavage furrow. I can't see it good here. I see something right there starting. But we drew, we can draw it nice. Because you know in real life things never look as good as we draw. Okay? Now, after anaphase comes telophase. Remember PMAT? P E M A T? The nuclear membrane begins to come back and it might not finish. Because this thing thinks he's doing mitosis. And then other enzymes kick in and go, no, we're not done yet. Okay, now let me erase my set back. So the nuclear membrane, it says begins to reform. It doesn't say reforms, does it? Begins to reform indicates you start and you don't finish. Because I gotta do one more division. Okay? Nuclei start to come back. The, the fur happened there. Now, and the first cytokinesis, the cells do split in half. I mean, they're going to separate totally. 
and the first son of Anesis. Then this devil is going to divide. He will going to divide. Okay? Now, the crossover, and see how this blue used to be stuck on this blue, didn't it not? And that green stuck on that green, was it not? Well, if someone gets in there's the blue up there. Obviously, all four of these chromosomes they ain't none alike. They're totally different. So that the kid will not look like the parent. Because the gene, I know I got from mama, but there's a shuffling of the deck of cards before she gave me my hand. Okay? Now, this is telephase one. <coughs> now, if you looked at this, you probably wouldn't know mitosis of, from meiosis. You know one thing, I know a telephase something. Something. And the other pictures, um, this is showing you the black and the red. So the crossing over happened right there. It also happened right there. On these over here, I see some crossing over. And then it's short there too. So all, all the handmade drawings are still indicating. Now, you see that one central right there? You gotta find another one. There gotta be two of them to make that thing come apart. So when this thing divides, it starts over again. You make a copy, they'll migrate again. You have a new metaphase, you have a new anaphase. When you get down to the next telophase, you're gonna have four brand new cells with one chromosome each. And that's gonna be how it works. So actually two chromos two chromos each. Now, so cytokinesis. After the first division, you've achieved your goal. You have the halfway number. And right there, they're pinching it too. And this is cytokinesis. They, they do shrivel up, and you can no longer see them as pretty as they were. But they will thicken back up again, and they're going to divide again. Now, there's three. That means that if if this haploid is three, what was diploid? If half is three, what was the whole? Six. If I gave you three pennies, and that's half of what I have, what do I have? Six. I have six. If I gave you half of my collection of marbles, and I gave you three of my marbles, I would have had to have six to start with to give you half of them. Right. Now, we just finished the first meiosis and we have our diploid number. But now we got to divide that cell to get our four cells. And now we do what's called meiosis two. And this is where the two differ. Now, remember, meiosis one was finished. And there's a lag time in there between meiosis two, but well, that's called interkinesis. The, the lag time between the end of meiosis one and the start of meiosis two, we don't say interphase, we say interkinesis, because we know we're not done yet. It's just going to be an intermediate stopping. No replication. If I replicate them, I'm back at two in. I don't, want to rep I don't want to replicate them because if I replicate them now, I'm right back where I started. I'm back. And I don't want two in. I want one in. So I'm going to pull them apart. But that every hit and double. That's going to guarantee I get what I want. Okay? Now, you remember that you had a single X inside? Let me go back and look at it. See the single X? They're going to separate. Like that, right there. But now, this, these are two chromatids. Now you got two chromosomes. When they separate, you may call them chromosomes. This represents one chromosome that doubled. This represents what he has become. He has become two. So when they separate, then you're going to see them. And this leg, and this leg, no longer are touching. But then I can say this is a chromosome, and that, and, and half might be mama and half might be daddy. Because crossing over happened in the chiasma. 
Now, the X by itself stands for one chromosome, two chromatids. But the moment that sucker splits, it's two chromosomes. Okay? Now, in the start off cell, I try to keep it. How many chromosomes do you see? I see a red and a blue, right? I see two. Diploid is two. Right? Now, I make copies of themselves. I still see one red, but he's now got his chromatids. I still said, I still got my, my two chromosomes, but they're double now. This is a tetrad. But they're going to separate. Now, does that still stand for one chromosome? It really does. That's one chromosome with his twin still with him. Now, the moment this occurs, this cell has two, he has one. He has the red one. Now, these are going to split and divide. And you look. He double, he double. I have two of these in one cell, two of those in one cell. I got two red. Now, I do see crossing over right there. That little red, that little blue spurt. Yeah, they try to show crossing over here. I do see blue and a little tad of red. I see red and a little tad of blue. Why are, why is no red on those outside ones? Did they have a crossover? The outside ones. They never cross them. <coughs> the only crossing over is going to be between which one? The two inside ones. <coughs> this is one. There's your outside. There's your inside. There's your inside. And they get side by side. Only these two legs touch. These never touch. Cross over only occurs between the two middle legs. So when you get the picture over here and you're wondering, I see a lot of folks, they sit, they start looking here for a little bit of blue. Anything gonna happen. Only the middle legs cross over. So if you look up here, I got two per cell. You look down here, I got one per cell. They did double to make it possible. They doubled so that I can pull it apart. I can put one in one cell and one in the other cell like I've done down here. So, one, there's two. Still two. And now there's one per. Chromatid, chromatid. This still represents one chromosome. And this represents one chromosome. And then, these will be pulled apart. You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to go through... This, this right here, they left out metaphase. Because there's no lining up, there's only one of them. They left out anaphase. They have moved right on telophase because the issue is I need to show four cells arising, all of them having just one chromosome, but the start off cell had two. And if you did that and you had like four of these and four of those, you couldn't follow it. It'd be so complicated. So when you show my to students, you know, let's just use one or two. Let's not use like 46. It'd be terrible. So we start simple thing. You can't be simpler than two. You can't be, no. Two chromosomes, if it's small, you're going to get. But one ain't haploid. I mean, one ain't diploid. And when I get done, I'm going to have two of these. I made copies, and there's these two copies, they're their chromosomes, and these two cells divide. And that's the beauty of my own. And it's just nothing to it, really. <clears throat> and they didn't show you, they didn't show you metaphase, they didn't show you, because it's not trying to show you the stages, it wants to see the results. And the thing is, you start off here. And a myosis one, when you get done, you're going to have two brand new cells. Red in one, blue in one. Red is one chromosome. Blue is one chromosome. 
but thank goodness they're already doubled. So when I separate them, I can truly get four brand new cells. When I had one to off there. And that's how you do it. I got some pick oh, I got these um these are some good they're not animation, these are real deals. Let me go show you what I'm 